so hello everybody welcome back I hope that uh, this uh, information is helpful somehow and um, now I'm going to uh, talk to you a little bit more about uh, fuel and uh, how we manage uh, when we have shortages um, I have mentioned before there is a video about this topic uh, well I have several videos on fuel but um, anyway, grab your coffee and you might need to take notes because this topic is quite, quite, quite expensive. <laughs> it uses water. Um, so anyway, I have a reproduction list on water and I also have uh, several videos on fuel. Um, and uh, in the, the last video about uh, Q&A from uh, fuel things, um, I said that I was going to show you something, but that one belongs to uh, this, uh, this reproduction list, which is a personal experience, uh, because this one, it, it may not necessarily be how you handle things. And um, I'm going to start by um, talking to you about uh, the rationing thing. Um, and anyway, before I continue, I wanted to remind you that um, there are links for uh, the videos down below. And there are uh, also links for helping me out if you wanted to do that, uh, you know, like share a coffee with me or something. Um, and uh, in the Q&A for fuel video, I mentioned that, um, you know, uh, this is a pneumological topic, which means that the energy on this topic is going to be out of whack, which means that rationing is going to be asked by people. And the rationing at the beginning, it might be kind of like they limit the amount that you can take. You know, like when you go to the store, the first step of rationing something is um, is usually you, you know, uh, acquiring only two soaps, only uh, 10 liters of gasoline, uh, only uh, one package of toilet paper, uh, one liter of oil, whatever it is that you're buying. Um, the store will limit the amount that you can get so that they can attract more customers. Uh, because you see, uh, when you go into a store and you need go, to go shopping, if you can only buy one thing, um, you know, you go into the store because you want to buy one thing, but you ended up buying more. Uh, and if, if that thing that they, they need is not there, then that customer is going to go and spend all of the money in another store. Uh, most people will go into their uh, shopping process like that. It's kind of like uh, you enter a supermarket because you want to buy milk. But uh, because, you know, your wife told you, hey, I need milk. And then you go through the aisles and then you find a freaking meal. And then you realize, oh, yeah, I need beer. And I want these and I want that. And I need these and these and these and that. And then you end up buying, you know, uh, I don't know, let's say $100 worth of things. And then, uh, you know, you go home. However, you know, did you, did you plan on, on buying all of these things? No. You bought them because uh, the store had them. So if the stores do not have certain items, uh, they will lose customers. So even if, if they sell you, if, even if they were to sell everything in one aisle, all the other aisles will be cold because they don't have customers. That, that, that's the reasoning behind the rationing. Uh, they are trying to have... Uh, as many customers as possible and if there is, if the line for for you to pay to the cashier is longer then the, the, there is more chance of you buying more things uh, because uh, let's say that uh, you know um, you, you have been there for 20 minutes and and you're and you're tired and and you haven't eaten and you're pissed or whatever and then you know uh, at, this is why in the cashiers uh, thing they will have uh, bubble gums, uh, condoms. They will also have, um, you know, the the things that are uh, like like impulses buys, like like candies, beer, and other things that are are like that. Um, beer, uh, not in the sense that you know the cold ones. Sometimes they will have them. You know that's why they are putting uh, small refrigerators right there in the cashier because if you just spend, you know 
instead of 20 minutes, now you have been there for 40 minutes, you want something cold before you go into the car, you know, having a drink like that is, 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 is more likely to be sold rather than, you know, if, if you have to be in the supermarket for five minutes and then you don't have a line and then you're done. So uh, the, the things in the supermarket, the locations and everything will change in order to adapt to uh, make you wait longer. And by the way, they will also sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes they will even make you wait longer. Uh, they, will, uh, they will take less cashiers or they will, pay, they will place the cashiers that have no training uh, in the top in the, when there is more customers and stuff. And then that way, you know, you will be kind of like, but the cashier and the manager might say something like, but the cashiers are, all the, are working. Yeah, it's just that uh, they need people to stay in the line a little bit longer. Um, and, and they will do uh, they will do the image or they will do kind of like what we call the, the awahe thing. Uh, awahe means um, it's kind of like uh, you painting something, but but the but the brush has no paint, sort of like that. Um, so you know, so now you need to understand that uh, your shopping process will change, uh, the rationing will change, and everything will change. Because if you go into the supermarket, let's say three times during a week, and every single time that you go there, it, it takes forever. You know, like it, it used to take 20 minutes, but now it takes one hour to, to do the shopping. And it's, you know, two or three times a week, it, it's a long. So people will be more pissed and people will be asking for even more rationing. Not just in the amount that you are giving to people, but also in the date. And that way, you know, they will be kind of like, I'm going to do this line only once a week. I'm not going to deal with this more. So um, rationing uh, will be done uh, by day. And then it's going to be worse. And in terms of fuel, this means that uh, you can only put gasoline to your car once a week, depending upon the the... the the last number or letter for uh, the ID of the car. And that, 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 that's going to drive you crazy. Because if you have to work every day, then you need to figure something out. Because if you used to put gasoline two or three times or four times per week, now you can only do it once. Oh, and by the way, if you did not put gasoline that particular day, then you're done. You have to wait until next week. Um, so that means that if you don't do it exactly in the day that they tell you to do it, then you are going to be without gasoline for two weeks. And I do not need to tell you that two weeks without gasoline, it's going to drive you completely crazy. And, and then, you know, there are going to be other issues because uh, your car it's not going to be shared just by you. It's probably, let's say that you have a family car and that means that your car is also your wife's cars and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, it's unfair because she's also using the car and then the, the amount of fuel that you have will have to be shared by the two of you. And what about if you have to work both of you and then you can't miss that day uh, so that you can go and uh, fill up your tank? So for example, let's say that the car needs to be filled on Wednesday and uh, your wife has a presentation that Wednesday, but you have a major interview so that you can get, I don't know, a promotion or something. And it's also on Wednesday, by the way, on Tuesday night, you are probably going to be, you know, spending the night in the middle of nowhere, trying to, to go to the freaking line to try to get the gasoline for Wednesday. So if you are going to, you know, if you're thinking, okay, on Wednesday I can go, oh no, you're going to be spending Tuesday night in, in whatever gas station waiting for that thing to open on Wednesday, and then that, that, you know, that, you, that way you will be able to fill it up. Because if you wait, like, mid-Wednesday, then fuel pumps are already empty, and you won't be able to fill up. And then you will be on, on Thursday, kind of like, but it's unfair. Yesterday, I could not fill up my tank because there was no gasoline. And, they, and the people will be kind of like, yeah, sorry, but today is Thursday's turn. It's not Wednesday's turn. Uh, it's not our fault that the gas stations were empty on Wednesday. By the way, worst days to shop for anything are, uh, are always going to be Wednesdays uh, and Thursdays. Tuesdays afternoons, Wednesdays, and 
Thursdays because most trucks will always arrive on Monday and Friday. So if you are, you know, between before Friday, Thursday, you are probably going to get nothing. <laughs> you know, by the way, I know that one because my day of shopping is Thursday. And it was a statistical fact that there were neighbors that were keeping track of how many items you could get each day. And the worst day by far, it was uh, Thursday, uh, then Wednesday, and then uh, Monday, if it, it was uh, very early morning. Like, uh, because obviously you put something on Friday and you need to replace it by Monday morning. So if the truck ended up being Monday afternoon, Monday morning is your worst because you will find nothing. So, so this is going to, to be uh, an issue. And like I said, you know, people will be begging for even more regulation. And then, of course, you will have people fighting people because it is, is a thing, you know? People will be kind of like, why do we need more regulation? And then, you know, people will say, we need more regulation because we're stupid. And then other people will say, we're, we're not stupid. And then, yeah, prove that we're stupid. And then the other people will say, prove that we're not stupid. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, it, it's going to take a, a huge thing going on. And then the, the point is that um, it, it, rationing will be evolving. You know, from you not being able to buy something, then you not being able to buy it uh, in a weekly basis or in a monthly basis or whatever. But, it, it, but you know, it will have to be on, on, on one day only. And then, you know, um, it will not only be like that, but it will also be other stuff that they will do on to the rationing, which is like, like uh, by the way, if you have a store or something like that, yeah, you are going to become... Uh, pretty tight in terms of expenses because the third step of rationing is that um, you need to put your fingerprint so that, um, so that the system knows what you're buying, when you're buying it, and then, you know, that way uh, they will be able to tell you whether you can buy it or not. So, um, you know, we sometimes we went to the store and then we put our finger, the fingerprint and the fingerprint, you know, uh, you, you know, for example, let's say that I went to shop uh, uh, for something on, on Thursday. And, um, you know, I, I bought uh, two oil in, in one store and then the, the other store also have oil. Uh, they didn't have anything, but I already spent, you know, three hours on the freaking line, so they have to sell me anything. So when I'm going to pay, they will say, oh, no, you already bought oil, so I'm sorry, you just missed the entire line because there is nothing else and you already bought the oil. You know, kind of like that. So um, having the fingerprint into the rationing system for the fuel, for in terms of shopping, is going to limit you, like, my God, if you don't die of a heart attack, I, I think that you will never ever have any kind of heart problems uh, because you're going to be so furious, be like beyond, uh, uh, beyond, beyond mad um, because, you know, you spend three hours and they're not going to sell you anything because the system says that you already put the fingerprint and you already bought something and you can't buy it again and stuff like that. And it's like you don't know what you're getting when you're buying things on the store. But um, in terms of the fuel, this also means that... Um, you will need to put your fingerprint uh, the day that you are going to, into the gas station. And then if the machine cannot read your fingerprint, you are not getting gasoline. I'm going to say that one again because this one happened to my neighbor. You have no idea how many times. And I've known people that uh, they are insane because they, they can't get fuel if your fingerprint cannot be read. And by the way, this happened to men more frequently than women, obviously, because men have to work with their hands, like, like mechanics or, 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 or whatever it is. And so men do not have fingerprints, <laughs> and, and, and especially when they are old or when they have been into accidents or stuff. And, um, and this one is going to make you mad because in the first step of rationing, you're going to be kind of like, yeah, I need to do five trips to do this thing. In the second step, in, in the second step, which is uh, only Tuesday or only Wednesday or only whenever, oh my God, you're going to have to, you know, uh, 
go crazy about where to go and, and finding the right contacts and everything. And, and, it, and it's going to cost you money and time and effort and all of that if you haven't built that before hard times and before the rationing thing. And it's going to drive you even more crazy. And the third step, uh, which is like uh, you put in the fingerprint to make sure that you uh, uh, and, and by the way, sometimes they will not even let you uh, put gasoline into the car if you are not the owner of the car. Meaning, you go into the gas station and you need to prove that the car is yours because otherwise you're not putting gasoline into the car. So for example, let's say that I am married to a guy and uh, the car is in the guy's name. So today is Wednesday and I am doing the line and I'm doing everything. And when I go to shop for the, for the fuel, they will say, uh, where is the owner of the car? And then I say, uh, you know, uh, he's not here. I'm paying. And then he said, uh, no, sorry, uh, we're not going to sell you if you're not the owner of the car. And then you go, but <laughs> it's a car. <laughs> I don't have to be the owner to pay for it. It's kind of like, <laughs> yeah. And again, you know, it will depend upon who you are dealing with and it will depend upon how desperate they are for money and stuff like that. So you might need to understand bribing and all these things. And, and then, you know, if the owner of the car shows up, um, yeah, they're going to say, okay, put your fingerprint here. And then you go, yeah, the, the machine won't read the, the fingerprint. Yeah, I'm sorry, then we can't sell you fuel. And then you go, but what are my options? Yeah, your options are, you know, um, you can go green, you know, kind of bribing and stuff like that. And it's going to drive people crazy. Um, in fact, it, it will drive so much, you know, especially if you are a person who is, uh, be, uh, you know, more than uh, more than 40. If you're a person who is like uh, 45 or more, you're going to be kind of like, um, you, are, um, you are a degenerate person and I'm not, you know, paying you, this is my right or whatever. So they will be pissed and they will leave and then they are not buying anything. And these people, you know, it's kind of like you telling your dad, dad, just pay. And then your dad will go, why will I pay like that? You are creating, uh, you know, uh, freaking leeches. Uh, and everybody's leeching out of everybody because you are doing that. And no, I'm not paying and stuff like that. So, oh my God, it's going to go crazy. Uh, you know, with people that are old, people that will like following the rules. The problem is that the rules uh, are, are always going to, to be logical. That means that rules are always uh, going to be stupid. We are not smart because of, uh, because of the information that we have. We are smart because how we use it, as in wise, as in, uh, you know, emotional thing. You know, it's how we evolve through emotions. And, and it, because otherwise, um, you know, we, we will not be able to do anything. We will be worse than animals because animals have instincts and stuff. We have nothing. We have a brain that is supposed to be make us logical, but our brains are not us. We are the ones who evolve. Our brains are always going to be the same. Logic will never change. Information will never change. How we use it is the thing that is going to make us what we are, and it's going to be the one that, that, that is going to drive everyone crazy because uh, you will not know how to react in these situations. and. Um, you will be pissed, uh, and if you are a woman, you know the guy might take advantage of you. You know, I have, I have, I have heard, uh, I haven't been there, but oh crap, I have heard the story of guys that will be kind of like, I'm dating you, or, or I have a kiss or something. You know, so oh, crap is bad. Um, so uh, you know, it, you might face guys who don't want money or something else, but if you are a girl, you know, they will be kind of like, yeah. So, you know, it is going to be a situation that is going to make, uh, I know some men will do that, but by the way, just very few, like, like maybe one in 10. The other nine will be kind of like, I don't care if you're a girl or, or a boy or a guy or a trans or whatever the hell you are, I don't give a crap, you are giving me my money. You know, so the, some people will be like that. Uh, so, so I guess that it will depend. It will always depend upon the person and it will always depend upon the situation and it will depend upon the day that you have to pay. And anyway, <clears throat> so other things that I wanted to talk to you about was uh, the plane versus the car, the trains and others. I have mentioned this one before, but I didn't uh, mention it enough. Um, in the beginning, you are not traveling by plane. 
like, I don't know, for, like, for one year. For one year, planes are going to be like, you will have to sell your car to try to get a plane ticket. And uh, it, it's going to be that bad. So, no, you know, uh, you, you, you don't do that. However, as time progresses and, uh, you know, cars, maintaining a car and fixing a car and, and then the fuel for a car, it becomes so weird. Uh, then you traveling there by plane, it will be more, you know, affordable. So I'm going to try to explain this one. If I go to a city in my country that is about uh, seven hours away from here, which is a tourist point, and by the way, that one is a very, very, oh my God, it's one of the best spots here. Um, seven hours, uh, you know, on, on traveling by car, it will cost you $1,300. And I'm not joking, $1,300 here in Venezuela now. You go in there, it's costing you $1,300. And I don't, you know, you are making $25 per month because the minimum wage use um, the, the, the government in, in May, the, in, in April, April, mid-April or something like that, beginning of May, they said that the minimum wage was not going to be $3, it was going to be $25. So you are making $25 in a month. Okay, let's say $30. So you're making $30 in a month and you traveling seven hours in your car is going to cost you $1,300. But if you go there by plane, it will cost you $400. So, so yeah, you know, so, it's going to be kind of like in Japan. And like I said, you know, early in Japan, um, you can go there by train, but it's going to be more expensive than you doing it by plane and, and stuff like that. And it is because of uh, the cost of electricity versus fuel versus maintenance. Because uh, when you're talking about fuel, you are also talking about maintenance of whatever it is that is using that fuel. If the cost of that maintenance is too high, then that machine is useless. So if your car consumes too much gasoline, it's useless. Nobody will want to buy it, even if it is big and comfortable and whatever. If it is not fuel efficient, then you are not buying it. And, and you know, you finding spare parts for those, uh, uh, those, um, those vehicles, whether it is a plane, a train, or whatever, is also going to play a big role here. Finding spare parts for, for planes is going to be kind of easy. Finding spare parts for trains, not so much. Even though that is not as expensive. And you know, because uh, a train that consumes a little bit of electricity is not as bad as a plane that, that, that consumes fuel. However, it is not just about the cost of the fuel. It will be also about the cost of the maintenance. And so this one is going to take everyone uh, by surprise because people will not consider maintaining anything. And then when things break, ooh, which is like six months after all of this thing happens, at this point, uh, all of the economy will be the opposite of whatever it was six months ago. And then, you know, things are going to be kind of like a wheel of fortune. So today you're in good luck, tomorrow you're not. The next day you don't know, the next day yes, the next day no, the next day no, the next day yes, the next day yes, the next day yes, and then no, 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 and then yes, and then no, and it's kind of going to be kind of like that. And you never know. And you will never know because uh, we are not known for having uh, the best education in terms of finances, as in you planning for emergencies, you planning for... Uh, paying something uh, now, saving monthly so that you do not have to pay something, you know, once and for all, but rather you will finance it and then be into debt and all of that. So, uh, you know, don't, knowing all of those tricks, um, yeah, not happening. <laughs> and in fact, uh, once you are in hard times, you are not even going to learn them. You're just going to try to roll with them and then it's going to make the wheel of fortune break. And then you will not even know whether this is good or bad. And then you will just stop doing anything that you're doing. You are not traveling anymore. You're not talking to people anymore. You're not calling anyone anymore. You're just not doing anything anymore because of that. And here is what I wanted to show you the other thing, which is these images. So I am trying. 
I'm sorry if it, do, if it does not look the best. I am going to try to make it so that you can see it the best. So this is a bottle. Um, do not do this at home, by the way, unless you absolutely are certain of what you are doing and you understand plastics. So when you're pouring gasoline into the car, uh, most people think that it's going to be done with the container and that's it. No, it's not. <laughs> Because whatever gas canister you get, you need to get the proper nose to access uh, the, the tank, the fuel tank. And so you need something like this. It's a, it's a, it's a tube. So this tube is a small tube that goes into the bigger tube and this tube uh, opens the, the fuel tank uh, because if you pour gasoline into like that you are not getting the gasoline and then it will pour all over the car it will not get into the fuel tank um, so you need some sort of a stick um, and you need to understand how to do it because this one is um, metal but metal with metal will crash and uh, it will be damaged you know, uh, in terms of um, uh, creating sparks and fire things and whatever. So this one, it, it, you know, they recollect it with uh, plastic. I don't know if you can see it here, but you can see that this thing is blue. You know, there is like a small blue thing. Yeah, that is because it's wrapped in a little bit of plastic, like a thin plastic thing. Um, uh, both outside and in because it's metal and whenever you have fuels you are not supposed to have metal uh, that can spark and anything like that so here is how you do it you take the gasoline by the way this is because if you are not doing it like this then you will need two people two people to pour gasoline into your car because you will need someone to do this for you and by the way if you're thinking that you can get one funnel normal no you don't because the funnels are like this and you getting the fuel into the tank needs to be going like that inclinated see it's inclinated it's not straight and if you have a funnel the funnel will go like that and so you either get a proper hose that you can connect to the funnel and stuff like that and that thing means that um you will lose the stuff if it's not properly um uh Put together now how you put together things if you can't build something like this or you don't know what that is or, or something like that by the way like I said this one is handmade and it was made by a guy um, you know and and this one is a cut you know you cut this thing like that so that you can place uh, this one more uh, securely so you need this by the way so if you haven't uh, you know if you don't know what you want to do about that then, uh, um, you know, I do suggest that you buy a lot of this one. Yes. A lot of uh, tape, but not plastic. This one, see, is paper. This one is paper. It's not uh, tape. Uh, I, I suggest that you buy a lot of this uh, because you will need it to secure fuel all over because if you secure fuel like short term or stuff like that with plastic tape um, you you might not be able to do it and at the same time you might leak gas and it will be bad and stuff like that but this one is more usable because the duct tape will be too strong and you might not be able to uh, to separate it if you need it to put together again or if it didn't fit properly or whatever so it, it, it might be an issue but this one you can you know use and it's easy to take out and stuff like that um, I, I always get this this and this one is, is two fingers but there is one that is four fingers uh, that one is the one that I recommend getting the four and the two fingers uh, you know um, and it's important to have these ones um, 
uh, these ones can also be used for um, anything that needs to be uh, labeled you know because you just place it over something you know and and then you say something like do not open or uh, a package that you're sending or whatever and it will be something that uh, that uh, you can mark on it uh, you cannot mark uh, on top of plastic or it won't look as good uh, as, as, as readable and everything as paper so um, uh, and this one, uh, the, the glue on this one will last more than the ones on plastic. You know, in my experience, I mean, um, you know, somebody else might have a different experience, but I think, you know, I haven't actually like tested or something, but I think that this glue will last a little bit longer and it will be better. Um, you know, of course it will depend upon the brand and everything, but uh, point being that uh, this is uh, extremely useful items when you're handling fuel. Other thing that you need to consider about these fuel things, like I said, you need the hose and you need the, the whole thing, is this little thing, these handles. These handles for that type of container, they will break in the, la in the worst possible moment. Like when you're handling the fuel like that, it will break. This is also why most of the times, uh, you know, you want to have your hands free so that if this fails, you know, if this breaks, then this, because it has this hole in it and stuff like that, this will be able to hold it. And that means that you are not dropping it. Like, like, you know, like, like, I don't know, like, let's say that uh, you are dropping something like this, you know, so the water is up to here, right? But if you put it like that, oh my God, you're going to be dropping everything. And then it's, it's going to create an accident and everything else. So, um, so whatever device you come up with, it, it should not be all equal uh, in the same time. It's kind of like, like, like the same, the same thing that, 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 that when you have a, a thing for, for uh, you know, the device that you, you buy for, for uh, being upstanding when you're a woman, you know, it doesn't go like, like equal in both sides. Yeah, so it needs to go uh, different in both sides. And that's why, you know, you have that hole because otherwise it will just be complete and then you just pour in, pour in the thing in there. Uh, the reason why you don't do it like that, like I said, completely, is because if this breaks or something breaks or you slip or something like that and this thing is in there, then you are dropping everything, you know, like that. And then you are more, more prone to have a lot of accidents. So uh, the small details are, are quite important when you're handling the pouring of the gasoline. And, and also uh, the size of the container will matter in terms of you handling this because um, my neighbor, when he was uh, pouring gasoline in the containers that were big, uh, like, like the brown one that I showed you in the last video. Um, yeah, that one was so heavy. We needed two people to handle it because you need two people to handle it because you need one person moving it and then another person trying to make it so that it doesn't drop. Uh, so, so whatever device uh, you, you come up with of this one, oh, it, it will be good as long as you understand what you're doing. Because I don't know if you can see that one in here. I'm sorry, uh, here. I do not know if you can see this one. But in here, you can tell that it's, 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 it's not uh, only metal. See, because it has something like black and stuff. I don't know if you can see it better in here. But, um, you know, you can see it's metal. But as soon as it touches the gasoline and everything, you can see that it's a little bit different. And by the way, you do need to come, to come up with a solution in terms of uh, several things. <clears throat> Number one, fuel contamination, because you will have fuel contamination. Because when you're handling plastic like that and everything, even if it is just micro, micro drops or whatever, uh, this system, the best system, the funnel system, the whole system, whatever system, it will damage uh, the, the gasoline at the end. And then the bottom part of your fuel tank will be filled with a lot of... Uh, pollutants or, or stuff that is not supposed to be there. And so three things that are going to be always, always a very, very, very good idea to have a spare part in your car. 
uh, it will be a fuel pump per se and um, the, the battery for the fuel pump you know and there is another piece but I don't know what it is I forgot how to call it in Spanish let alone English um, the reason why is this one uh, the fuel pump is hot and it is handling fuel and the reason why it doesn't blow up is because the fuel pump has uh, several plastic on it and several things on it so that it doesn't blow up okay okay there is a reason why cars don't use blow up unless there is something really wrong like you pouring gasoline into this thing and and then and, and you know because I, as you can tell this uh, thing has opened the 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 side uh the side part of the tr the, the car uh it's open see this one is here and the, the reason why you want to have a very long thing is because that way it will not leak gasoline near the car if you put it very close to the car then whatever gasoline leaks it will be in the car and I have mentioned before that the gasoline will blow up because of gas it will not blow up because of uh, you touching the liquid it will blow up because of the gas now the reason why uh, cars do not blow up is because the fuel pump has uh, those things that are uh, you know helping with the gas and and the gas will create even more hot things inside and then you know it will be an issue so here is what happens cars actually start setting themselves on fire because you do not have the bare minimum of half of the tank and up if you're always running your car with less than one quarter or or maybe one quarter of the gasoline tank i can assure you that one way or another one you are a very 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 high risk of the car catching fire even you know with very little gasoline because uh, the fuel pump requires uh the fuel sort of like the liquid uh the, to be cool because the fuel pump is working is fixing you know a lot of things and it is hot and and instead of having you know this is a type of plastic or, or metal or, or something that it, it, in order for it to be to be cool it uses the same gasoline and so if the gasoline is not there then it will be hot 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 and then it will it will melt it will break and when that happens then the car might be on fire you know it is it, it, a it by the way is still a low chance but oh my god we have like once a month at least once a month we have uh, we have cars that are that are in the gas station and they start catching fire near the gas station and and you will think but it but if it's going to catch fire why will it be near the gas station is it because of the gasoline no it's because um the fuel pump is so hot because the, the, the cars are, are running, people are running their cars on, on less than, you know, less than half of the tank. Let's say one quarter of the tank. And when they reach one quarter of the tank, they start making the freaking line to try to get the gasoline. So the, 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 the fuel pump is already very, very, very hot. And then you are pouring gasoline in it or or you're trying to do it and then the thing is is it's is just a freaking temperature and everything and it's a mess point being a very good idea it will be to have the fuel pump because that one will melt will break whatever and i haven't seen one person that haven't told me that because of all the gasoline problems and all the gasoline things or whatever they haven't damaged the battery to turn on the gasoline fuel pump thing because the gasoline fuel pump thing works with a battery and that battery if it is polluted at all like like even if you let's say that if it was like like a like a i don't know let's say if it was a, a thing like this machine even if you try to to do like i touched it yeah that's it the, the, the battery is the, is gone <laughs> it will be dead you know 
uh, it's a very delicate thing. You know, it, it, it's like it, the battery will be like, oh my God, I'm allergic to dust. Oh my God, I'm allergic to water. I'm allergic to this, I'm allergic to that. And then, phew, that's it, dead. So, uh, you know, those two spare parts is a good idea to have because if you're going to be always running <laughs> with, 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 with less than half of the tank, uh, because, uh, you know, it is bad. Oh, and by the way, if you are the type of person that will not take this chance, but rather will always have the, the tank feel, feel, feel to the top, feel to the top, feel to the top. If somebody stops you, you know, like police or whatever, and they can see that you have, that you have more than half of your tank, like almost filled, yeah, they are going to take a hose, they are going to stop you, and they are going to take the fuel from your car to their car or to whatever car they have and they will be kind of like yeah um you are not allowed to have more you know uh, the gasoline is rationed to only 10 liters so how come you have more than 10 liters and you're like i bought it or whatever yeah that means that you're going to the black market and stuff and then you know blah 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 so basically you either they will decommission the fuel from inside your vehicle that means that they are taking it out this happens in, in a city. There is a city in which every single day uh, that will happen. So no one in the city will drive with more than half of the tank. Like if you have a little bit beyond the half of the tank, oh, and then you're stopped, oh, they're going to drain the tank almost to the point of, of not, get, not leaving you more than maybe one or two liters so that you can get to the gas station. And when you're getting to the gas station, again, problems with the fuel pump, problems with the battery pump, and problems with the battery thing and whatever and stuff like that. Why? Well, because it was rationed and you're not supposed to have that much amount of fuel inside your car. So, you know, it, handling the, the fuel and handling these things is, 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 is very bad and very hard. And it's not like in the movies. <laughs> and, you know, in the movies, they might be doing it with even plastic tape or whatever. Oh, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to be using uh, proper things. And then, you know, finding these proper things um, uh, is kind of like an issue. And, and that's why, you know, you will have people that maybe do not have cards, but they can help you out with this, uh, building these things for you. Or, um, I don't know, because it will depend upon what you do best. If you are a, a, a very ingenious person and you understand how to do things, like you are like 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 an engineer person of MacGyver person, then you are probably going to be okay. Uh, and if you're not, then uh, you know you need to find somebody who is like that, and that someone needs to help you. And then at the same time, you need to learn uh, certain tricks like that one, which is you know it's not always duct tape. It's also this one, uh, quite 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 useful, uh, quite frankly. In fact, we always buy this one in bulk uh, because, oh, by the way, this one also very needed for school kids and school things uh, for the kids. So anyway, um, that is what I wanted to show you. Um, I hope that this was somehow uh, helpful. And, um, you know, if you want the links for the other videos on fuels and everything, they will be in the, in the description down below. And if you wanted to help me out, there, are the, there is a way to do that in the description down below. And if you have any other comments or questions, I think, I think, I believe I have covered everything about fuel. I, 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 I don't think I have, uh, you know, missed something unless you have like a question or something like that. But, you know, like I said, I already have a videos on, on, on the lines. Uh, Q&A, um, 